Okay, this is the video for polyatomic ions. In it, we are going to discuss uh, a collection of oxy anions as well as other polyatomic ions. But um, the focus of it is going to be the determination of the formula and name of um, oxy anions that end in eight, A-T-E. So the mnemonic device that we're going to use for this is Nick the Camel eight a clam before supper in Phoenix. Now this is um, a device that can be used not only to remember what the different ions are, nitrate, carbonate, chlorate, borate, sulfate, and uh, phosphate, but they'll actually help us um, with the formulas and charge. So how we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and pick on Nick here, right? So an oxy anion is an anion that contains oxygen. It's polyatomic. So there has to be another uh, element present. And in this case, if you look at Nick and Camel and Clam before Supper Phoenix, um, those capitalized letters representing the uh, symbols for the other elements in that oxy anion. So in this case with Nick, I'm going to have nitrogen as my other uh, element. And how I'm able to determine that it's going to be uh, a certain formula is based on what types of letters are present. So it's an oxygen containing anion. So we know that's nitrogen with oxygen. Question is we don't know how many oxygens, right? In every single one of these cases, there's only going to be one of the underlying letters. So for Nick, there's only one N. Or for nitrate, there's only one N. For carbonate, there's only one C. For chlorate, there's only one Cl. For borate, only one boron. Sulfate, one uh, sulfur. And then phosphate only has one phosphorus. Um, but the oxygen count is different. So what we can look at is the number of consonants in that word. So if I was to look at Nick, there's one, two, three consonants. And that's going to result in three oxygens, and then there's one vowel, which is going to give us our charge, and it's always going to be negative because it is an anion. So with this device of consonants representing oxygens and vowels representing va um, charge, then we can um, open the doors to a lot of polyatomic ions. So let's go ahead and take a look at camel. So with camel, I have carbon as my center atom, and I know there's oxygen. So consonants, one, two, three consonants. Vowels, one, two. So my carbonate ion is CO3 two minus. Okay. And using the same methodology, we can get chlorate, borate, sulfate, and phosphate. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can actually understand the translation of going from clam to chlorate before to borate, supper to sulfate, and phoenix to phosphate. So it is imperative that we understand how to go from uh, Nick the Camel ate a clam before supper in Phoenix to getting to these six polyatomic ions because it's really going to open the door to other polyatomic ions that can be um, built off of our understanding of Nick the Camel. So one thing I do want to address here is um, clam, specifically the chlorate. Now the nice thing about the chlorate is um, there are two other common polyatomic ions that come about. One of them is bromate and the other one is iodate. Now because bromine, iodine, and chlorine are all halogens and they're all the same family, 
um, and since families behave in a similar fashion, it is understandable that from chlorate I can actually get both iodate and bromate from understanding how to do chlorate. So even though clam does not directly give me bromate or iodate, if I understand the periodic table and I understand families of that periodic table, I can then use that to get bromate and iodate. So if we were to keep track of our number of polyatomic ions we know now, let's go ahead and put that up there. We now know eight, right? We know nit nitrate, carbonate, chlorate, bromate, iodate, bromate, or sorry, borate, sulfate, and phosphate. Okay? So, building off of that, we can actually um, use this and use this as a base. And if we change oxygens, like our oxygen amounts in each of these oxyanions, we open up the doors to ites, hypoites, and perates. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So let's take a look at carbonate. CO3, 2 minus. Okay. Now, if I wanted to change this carbonate to a carbonite, right? So I'm going from 8, so the suffix here, 8, is now going to ite. How that formula looks, difference, or the difference is an 8 has one more oxygen than an ite. So an ite is a result of subtracting one oxygen. So if this is carbonate, carbonite would look like this. Oh, my bad. Now, it's important to realize that even though I'm changing the oxygen counts here, my charge does not change when going from 8 to ite. Okay? So if I was to look at chlorate or borate or uh, sulfate or phosphate or nitrate, if I was to take away one oxygen from that formula, then I get an ite. So if nitrate is NO3 minus, NO2 minus is nitrite. ClO2 would be chlorite, BO2, 3 minus, notice the charge isn't changing, that would be borite, SO3, that's a 3, 2 minus, that's sulfite, and then phosphite, PO4, PO3, 2 minus, wow. Long day. There we go. PO3, 3 minus would be phosphite. So, of course, applying it to uh, bromite, BRO2 minus, and iodite, IO2 minus, same thing. So, the fact that I know my 8s allows me to get my ites. And this is my rule for my ites. So, let's change our count now. So instead of 8, now you know 16. Let's hypothesize or take a look at what's going to happen after we do another change. In this case, we're going to get rid of another oxygen. Okay, let's go ahead and take chlorate again. But now I'm going to take away two oxygens. So now it's going to be... So minus two oxygens, I'll get ClO minus. Again, charge does not change. When I take away two oxygens from the eight polyatomic, I'm going to end up with a hypo -ite. So 
this ion right here is hypochlorite. Okay, and I'll always have an ite when I take oxygens away. So whether it's one oxygen or it's two oxygens, it's going to be an ite because I took them away. Okay? And of course, this would apply for borate and uh, sulfate, phosphate, all the other nickel camel ones, okay? including iodate and uh, bromate. So looking at that, with hypos, R16 is now 24. But we can continue again. I'll go ahead and take a look at borate. BO3, 3 minus. So if I take oxygens away, I'm going to form an ite. If I take two away, I'm going to form a hypoite. So a hypo prefix and then ite suffix. If I add an oxygen, then I'm going to add the prefix per. So this is borate as it is. If I was to change this to a 4 and the charge doesn't change, I'm going to end up with per borate, and that's one word. All right? And of course, I can have per sulfate and per phosphate, per carbonate, per nitrate, per iodate, per chlorate. Okay? They're all applicable here. So with the application of the per rule, which is adding the oxygen, our 24 is now 32. Now we can continue with this. If I was to look at another 8, let's say uh, sulfate, okay, which is 2 minus. There is an instance in which uh, these sulfate ions can be exposed to hydrogen ions, and they come together to form a hydrogen sulfate. Now, this is not true for all compounds here, or for all polyatomic ions. Okay? The only time you're going to see it is if you have um, more than one negative charge. So, Nick is not going to abide by this rule. Camel will. Clam will not, borate will, su um, sorry, before will, supper will, and phoenix will. And phoenix is actually an even um, greater uh, application of this because we can actually do it twice since it's a three negative charge. But let's take a look at this first. So when I have a sulfate and I add a hydrogen, notice the charges, two minus plus one. Well, when I combine those two together, one of those minuses from, or one of those negatives from the sulfate is going to be canceled out. So my hydrogen sulfate actually has a negative one charge, not a negative two charge, because the hydrogen canceled one out. And this is true for carbonate and for borate and for phosphate. Okay? Now, there are some that are more common than others, but I'm just going to, this video is just to show you general rules that you can use. Now, of course, this is a hydrogen sulfate, and we can still go back and apply the same rules that we learned just a few slides ago with adding an oxygen or taking oxygen or taking two oxygens away to make a hydrogen sulfite, a hydrogen hyposulfite, um, a hydrogen persulfate. We can have all of that in theory. Okay? So, if I was to take a look at my count now, for applying this hydrogen adding uh, rule, which there is a common name for it, okay? It's by adding the prefix by, and you may see that a lot. I'm not gonna focus on that. I'm gonna focus on just calling it hydrogen sulfite, or hydrogen sulfite, or hydrogen carbonate, okay? Um, but you'll hear it a lot, especially with, with carbonate here, because you'll hear bicarbonate, which is the anion in baking soda. So that's a common one that you'll hear a lot. But understand that bicarbonate or bisulfate or biphosphate is going to be um, just the addition of hydrogen. Okay? But with that being said, if we look back at our, our count with camel, clam, or uh, camel, before, supper, and phoenix, we're adding 16 more polyatomic ions to our list. So. 
I'm now at 48. And that's just in doing the hydrogen rule with um, adding in the uh, oxygen changing rule. Okay. So if I do my ites and uh, perates and hypoites and all that kind of fun stuff, I'm going to gain 16 more. Now, phosphate over there has another opportunity to gain a hydrogen because if I go H, P, O, uh, four for our um, hydrogen phosphate, it can actually become, if it gains another hydrogen, H2PO4, and that would be minus, that would be a dihydrogen phosphate, since there's two hydrogens there. And of course, if I have the dihydrogen phosphate, then I can have ites and ites, or ites per ites and hypoites, so that adds even more to our our list here. All right, so adding four more, that comes up to 52. Again, it's all, this, it's just, that even though it's a big number, it's still application of the same handful of rules that we have to go along with Nick the Camel. But of course, there are some that don't really apply here to Nick the Camel, and we're going to talk about those as well. Um, there's a good amount of them actually, but for my class, the only thing that you're really focusing on are these three uh, polyatomic ions that don't necessarily fit the mold. One of them is acetate, which is our first polyatomic ion that actually has three elements in it. But, um, or that's not an oxyanion. Um, well, technically it is, but anyways. Um, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and with that which could also be written like this, and you may see it written like this, right? That is acetate. The other one is hydroxide, which is OH minus, which can only be written in that way. That is hydroxide. Now, I don't, <laughs> you know, one of the things that we focus so much on when we do our naming is Ides are monoatomic. Well, of course, there are exceptions. Hydroxide is one of them. So hydroxide, it's an ide, but it is actually a polyatomic. And a good way to remember that is if you look at the word hydroxide, it kind of gives a hint as to which elements are involved. Hydrogen, oxygen, hydroxide. Lastly, we have, and I'm putting it in a different color because it is a cation, and this is ammonium. Okay. Ammonium is one of the few polyatomic cations that we're going to come across in this year. But if you add up your 52 with these three, you have 55 under your belt. Okay, And obviously, you're not going to be seeing all 55. Right? You're going to be seeing probably on a regular basis about 20 to 25 of them. But what I'm trying to show you with that number is that with this application of Nick the Camel and the addition of these three polyatomic ions listed here, you can know a lot with Nick the Camel, the application of the oxygen rules and the hydrogen rules, and then these three polyatomics. So you can be well equipped for your nomenclature assessments.